couple more of their advertisements before I read about who they are. Here's another one that talks about educating leaders for the future. Maybe I mentioned that already. But look at this one. Look at this one. Here's what they say. Look at this ad. As a, here, I'm going to quote it, okay? As a global citizen, and I don't know this company at all, okay? So we're not talking about the company. We're talking about the type of advertisements that, are, that, that thread throughout their magazine, okay? So it says here, quote, as a global citizen, listen now, global citizen, to whom do I pledge allegiance? Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine putting that type of a statement in your magazine as an American citizen, to, as a, saying, as a global citizen, to whom do I pledge allegiance? Let me tell you something, folks. There is an attack on liberty. There is an attack on our union. There is an attack that's behind the scenes that is not just to the church, but to our whole nation and the founding principles of our nation. Oh, my God, don't let me get started on that. I think, you know what, when we, when we think about it, can you imagine what would happen if we told our school children not to say pledge allegiance to America, but to pledge allegiance to some global organization of some kind? I mean, something's wrong, folks. Where is it going to be addressed from? Who's going to stand up and say anything about these things? Is it okay that we just have a personal relationship with Jesus, but we don't address what's going on in the society around us? We have to stand up in this hour and, do, and say something. Amen. All right. I know I'm getting carried away. I know. But listen to this. Council on Foreign Relations. The Council on Foreign Relations is a nonpartisan foreign policy membership organization founded in 1921, and it talks about where their address is. And then it says here, it says their mission, the council's mission is promoting understanding of foreign policy and America's role in the world. America's role in the world. Interesting. But yet we just saw an advertisement that said, who do we pledge allegiance to? But yet their mission is America's role in the world. Meetings are convened at which government officials, global leaders, prominent members debate major foreign policy issues. I wonder how many Christians are doing these things. It has a think tank. Do we have a think tank in the body of Christ? I mean, is any of us coming together and talking about how we can change this world for Jesus? Are we having any meetings like that, or are we just having good church services? Listen, you know what? This strikes me that while we're having church on Sunday, or whatever night of the week we may have church, there are people gathering together talking about how can they take their agenda into the world and accomplish it? They have goals. Their goals, is, their goals are international dominion. But yet, we're having good church services, and I think we should have good church services, of course. But should the born-again believer be equipped to do anything besides get to heaven? I mean, look, if you're born again, you're going to go to heaven, but don't you want to do something with your life? I think in somebody, I think in everybody, there's this... There's this almost a divine frustration in all of us that says we, we, we should do something for Jesus, something greater than just going to church. Something, look, you know, for the longest time, we, we go to church and we get blessed. And I, I think blessing is a good thing. And I think that happens in church. And we go to church and we worship God. And that's a good thing that we worship God. But you know what? The apostolic that I see that's happening in the world today, the restoration of apostolic ministry, throughout churches in the world today is about equipping the believer to do something great for God. And I believe with that equipping is also coming a, a, an understanding of our responsibility to take the gospel into the world to do something with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now look at this. So they have, a, they have a think tank. They, um, they debate foreign policy issues. And um, they, uh, it says... And it has a think tank that, em that employs prominent scholars in international affairs, and it commissions subsequent books and reports and th so forth and so on. So it says they have scholars. You know, I was reading uh, Walt Whitman's book, and he was talking about what is a scholar. And he says a scholar is a man thinking, not just somebody that thinks or somebody that parrots what somebody else says. But I wonder how many of us born-again believers, we are men thinking thinking about the gospel and what we're supposed to do with it. Or are we just parroting slogans and things that we hear other people? Are we digging into the word ourselves to find out what our responsibility is as born-again believers, as the head of our own homes? 
to take this gospel of the kingdom and do something with it? My, 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 my. Look at this. Let's talk about some of the members of this organization. 